me, Miss Stacy, here at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I hope you're joining us for week three in our Blueprint series. However, if this is the first time you've joined us, then welcome. Okay, so I want to hear your name. Say out loud your name at the count of three. One, two, three. Nice to have you with us. This week we will continue to talk about feelings because God is greater than our feelings. I know it's another week talking about feelings, but remember, God gave us our emotions and he wants to help us deal with them. I need to deal with how I feel. Let's go ahead and kick off this Savior Kids session by singing to God together. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm sad, I know, and then you are with me. trust you. Yeah, I can trust you. You don't want perfection. You just want my best. And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest. God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything. Everything God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything, He knows everything. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm sad. I know, and then you are with me. Yeah, you are with me. You know when I'm worried, you know when I'm mad. I know, and then I can trust you. You just want my best And when my mind is racing You will give me rest God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything He knows everything God is greater You are greater than all I feel. You know it all and you always will. I trust in you with all that I've got. Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not. Woo! You are greater than all I feel. You know it all and you always will. I trust in you with all that I've got. Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not. Woo! God is greater than my feelings. He knows everything. He knows everything. He knows everything. God is greater. Good job, everyone! Worshiping God is a great way to deal with our feelings. This week, we'll be talking about the feeling of wanting to be perfect. Hey, everybody, listen up! Here's what God has to say. Oh yeah, what you got for us today? Have you ever wanted something to be so perfect that it drove you crazy? Was it the pictures on your science fair project needing to be just right? Oh, 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 maybe it was finishing that last level, AKA boss level, with a perfect score. And then if you don't get it right, you have to restart and restart and restart and restart. We, and... we get the point. Sometimes trying to be perfect can cause a total freak out moment. But we can remember that Jesus wants us to do our best. Yeah, I mean, he wants our very best, but not to the point where we have unrealistic expectations that makes us lose our cool. Ah, oh, dude, it's kind of like that whole Martha and Mary situation, am I right? I don't think I know what you're talking about. Oh man, okay, check it out. There are these two sisters, Martha and Mary, and one day as they're just hanging out, doing sister stuff, Jesus popped into town and wanted to come to their house. And that was like really cool, cause it's Jesus, and he's a pretty big deal. Can you imagine having Jesus come over to your house? I mean, not if that meant he would see all the dirty clothes on my bedroom floor. I'd have to get to work, and fast. I would want every single thing to be perfect. You totally get how Martha felt. Knowing that Jesus was coming to visit put Martha into work mode. I mean, as soon as he got there, she started running around all over the place, cleaning and cooking and cleaning some more. Now, don't get me wrong. 
It's good for things to be clean, and everyone definitely needs to eat. But Martha felt like she was the only one who cared, and that she was the only one doing all the work. Soon, these feelings caused a major problem. Oh no. Oh yeah. Martha, again, totally in food prep overdrive, was busy. You know, trying to make things perfect. But her sister Mary, not so much. Wait, where's Mary? Where's all... Mary in all this, you might ask? I think that's what I just said. Mary was just hanging out, listening to Jesus talk. And you know, when Jesus is talking, it's usually a good idea to listen. So that's exactly what Mary did. But that made Martha super mad. Martha was mad at Mary for listening to Jesus? Yeah, totally. I mean, here she was working hard to make sure everything was perfect for Jesus while Mary was just sitting there. Wait, why did that make Martha so mad? I thought it was important. Well, it was, but Martha was focused on the wrong thing. While she was busy with all that had to be done, she missed out on the good stuff. Oh, as in Jesus being right in front of her. Right. Well, Martha didn't see it that way, and she had had enough. She marched straight over to Jesus, and it went a little something like this. Jesus! Mary's just sitting over there, and I'm left to do all this work. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. Sounds like Martha was being critical of Mary. Exactly. Jesus let her know that Mary was actually the one doing the right thing. Martha was so stressed about making everything perfect for Jesus that she wasn't even able to enjoy his company. Okay, okay, I get it. It's not that cleaning and cooking was a bad thing. Martha just missed out on what was better. Rightio, muchacho. So, the next time you're stressed about things being perfect, don't forget, Jesus only wants your best. Do you ever feel like you have to be perfect or just busy? Do you notice that sometimes you feel overwhelmed? Or maybe your parents do, because we're trying to make things just right? Whew, I know I do that sometimes, and it's exhausting. I get so worked up about how something looks that I forget to enjoy my day, and I definitely forget to ask God for help with these feelings. So this passage in the Bible about Martha and Mary is such a good example for us when we feel we have to be perfect. I think many of us have felt like Martha, wondering why we're the ones doing all the work while Mary or others sit on the sidelines. But Mary is a beautiful example of what following Jesus is all about. The first step to being a disciple of Jesus is taking the time to stop, look, and listen to the truth of God's Word. It will lead us into an encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. This doesn't mean we don't try. Our cooperation with Jesus is to do our best. But if we're always trying to be perfect, we can miss out on the encounter just like Martha did. When I feel I need to be perfect, Jesus only wants my best. This is the best day. I just love to party. No, 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 not like that. Maybe like this? I don't know. Susanna, what's up? <coughs> what on earth are you working on? I mean, what could be so important that it makes you want to miss out on this mega fantastical super fun time P-A-R-T-Y? Skip, this is more important than cupcakes and confetti right now. This dollhouse has to be the best dollhouse anyone has ever seen. Looks good to me. Good? Good? Skip, it can't just be good. It has to be perfect. No, 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 not again. Okay, well, I can tell that you need some more time to finish up whatever it is you're working on. But hurry up. Little Lemonade, the unicorn horse wonder, is going to be here any minute. And I hear she's doing her flying trick today. We can't miss it. Just a, a little dab here. I thought you were almost done. Look at what Bongo the Clown gave me. Which color blue do you think it needs? Um, Suze, how many pairs of glasses does it take to see? There's no time for that. Which color is just right? I mean, perfect. How about blue? For a real skip, which blue? There is ocean mist, sky blue one, 
Sky Blue 2, not to be confused with Cloudy Sky Blue. Which color is going to be just perfect? Okay, I can see that you need more time. Um, hurry up or you'll miss the best part of the party. There will be no present for the party if I can't get this finished. I thought it was finished. It looked great already, Suze. The party is almost over. It's over! Suze, the party's over. Brought you a party favor. Now we're going to play a game called Spot It. Two cards will appear on your screen, and your job is to spot the object that appears on both cards as quickly as possible. You will only have 10 seconds before the cards disappear, so try and spot it fast. On your mark, get set, go! Over these past weeks, we've been talking about God's Word in the Bible and how Jesus can help us deal with how we feel. How is this possible? Well, last week I mentioned prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is a conversation with God. That's all it is. You might remember the first week I introduced myself that I mentioned I work here at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church. I'm the Director of Evangelization and Mission. My job at the church is to help Father O'Brien, Father Robert, and our parishioners to better know, love, and serve our Lord. It's a pretty awesome job, let me just say. But how does my job start? How does one learn how to better know, love, and serve the Lord? Well, through prayer. So one question someone could have is why should we know Jesus? Well, let's watch this short film and then we'll discuss this a little bit more. So a big part is getting to know Jesus Christ. So it's honestly, it's kind of sad, I think, how, how few people are one through arguments. And St. John Newman, uh, Archbishop Vigneron's favorite, he mentions how when someone's presented with a truth, they'll now have the opportunity. They can follow the truth or follow what's not true. Which one will they follow? Well, they will follow whichever one they love. Okay, so Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. When you get to love him, it's easier and easier to follow him and easier and easier to follow what he teaches through his church. So that's absolutely essential. And it's, it's amazing. There are people out there, the more you get to know them, the less you might like them. With Jesus Christ, the more you get to know him, the more you will like him. He's awesome. He died for you and he loves you very much. So why do we need to know Jesus? Because he's awesome and because he loves you. He loves you very, very much. And in God's love, we can work through all of our feelings that come up in life. It's pretty amazing, really. So how do we know Jesus? Well, one key way is to read the Bible and to pray with God's word. Reading God's word is the way to know the heart of God himself. God will help us realize that being perfect is never going to lead us to feeling good. And in fact, it can make us feel exhausted because we never slow down enough to enjoy life or encounter Jesus. So this week, I encourage you to use the passage from this week. It's Martha and Mary in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. 
and listen to God's voice about how much he wants you to stop and encounter his love for you. If you are feeling critical of yourself or others, remember, when I feel I need to be perfect, Jesus only wants my best. A saint is a woman or a man who lived on earth and is now in heaven. And this can include anybody. So it could also be your grandmother or somebody else who died before us. The Greek word hagios means a holy thing. It's connected to the Latin word sanctus, which is the origin of our word saint. The saints in heaven were once ordinary sinful people just like you and me. But with the help of God, they managed to place the love of God above anything else. They chose consciously not to go against the love of God, but to follow the love of God. In daily life, we usually use the word saint for those people who have been declared a saint by the church. They're not made a saint by the church. And that's important because that means we can pray to them and we can follow their example. To be sure that somebody is in heaven, the church asks for a miracle from God. And this is documented by scientists and doctors and they will decide that this is something they cannot explain scientifically or medically. Somebody was healed by a miracle. To make things a bit confusing, Saint Paul refers with the word saint to any person who believes in God, any Christian follower of Jesus. And that is because it is the vocation of each of us to become a saint. We all have one single destination, which is heaven. And whether we go to heaven is depending on our own actions, our own words, our own decisions. Basically, we have a free choice between accepting the love of God and rejecting it. If we accept the love of God and live in love with God and the people around us, our daily lives will be different. And then our future is to be with God forever in heaven, together with all the angels and the saints. Thanks again for joining us for Xavier Kids this week. I can't wait to see you again. Let's close by worshiping God and singing together.